Okay, so here it is. Exodus 25, verses 1 and 2. The Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites to bring me an offering. You are to receive the offering for me from everyone whose heart prompts them to give. Now, I originally planned for us to talk about this verse next week, because next week is when we talk about Exodus 25. So why in the world would I be bringing this verse up today? Yes, it's Gratitude Sunday. Yes, this verse is talking about offerings. And so maybe that's the reason. There are actually three reasons why I wanted to bring this verse from next week in the future. See, you're time travelers. We're bringing next week from the future and we're dragging it back to the present just for a little bit. There are three reasons. Number one, I'm getting emails already from stores who want me to buy things for Christmas. Are you? Uh, Just the other day, my wife asked me, so what do you want for Christmas? I'm like, okay, so everyone's going to start thinking about that kind of stuff now. And around Christmas time, you know, we got a little flurry of snow on Friday. We got frost on the ground today. I saw some cars on the road today that had to, that had to scrape the stuff off their, off their cars. I'm glad I've got a garage because I didn't have to do that. But anyway, so I'm getting more and more people who are thinking winter time, thinking Christmas time. And what happens when it comes to Christmas? We all think about how we're going to spend our money. And I want to start right at the beginning of the Christmas season, at the very beginning of November, to say, how about this Christmas? We stop thinking first about spending, and then we stop thinking secondly about getting, and we start thinking primarily about giving. So there's a reason I want to talk about giving a little bit this morning. Number two, I found out this last week that something we've done recently is something that has come back. Last year, we did a project where we raised money for the Salvation Army. Do you remember that? We raised $5,000 and another church in Indianapolis matched it $5,000 so that we could give $10,000 to the local Salvation Army. That same church has told me this last week that they want to do it again. And so, in fact, they're giving it a name this year. It's called Love Indiana. And they're going to send us boxes of stuff with a Love Indiana logo on the side of it. It doesn't say anything about their church or our church. It just says Love Indiana on the side of it. We're going to collect food items and other kinds of items. And we're going to donate them to food finders or some other food pantry in the area. And we're going to raise some money. But hang on, I'm getting ahead of myself. So we need to talk a little bit about money today. And that's the reason I'm bringing this verse up. And then the third reason I want to bring this verse up is something that I sent out in an email yesterday and posted a blog post. And Okay, so here's the deal. We are a church that has a nice facility, but we have outgrown it, and it's time for us to do something about it. So with those things said, now let me tell you about this verse and what this verse means, because this verse teaches us something that some pastors abuse. Hopefully I will not. What it teaches us is there is a type of giving that is based upon what you decide in your heart you want to do. There's a type of giving, a type of offering that God commands that is based upon what the individual person wants to do. Okay, does this make sense? This is the way we use our money all the time. We, in every aspect of our lives, when money leaves our bank account, it's because we have chosen to do something that we want to do. Okay, it's because our heart has prompted us to give money to this vendor so I achieve this product so that I get this experience, so I experience this joy. Every single time we use money in this world is based on the same principle. I give money away so that I get something in return. And God says that is a valid reason for people to give. If your heart says, I want to give to God, then go ahead and give to God. Now, there are two kinds of giving. And we've already seen one in Exodus besides this. So this is the second kind of giving. The first kind of giving we saw earlier. If you go back into Exodus, you will remember a time when God said, the firstborn of all of your flocks belongs to me. Now, this is only partially called giving. Because if God says it belongs to me, and I give this sheep to God, my firstborn sheep from this, from this lamb, uh, my firstborn lamb for this sheep, if I give this to God, it's already God's. He said it belongs to me. So I'm not really giving it to God. I'm just letting it go. I'm stopping holding it back. And God said earlier, the firstborn of all your flocks and herds belongs to me. In fact, he also said, the firstborn of all your children belongs to me. 
He said, but I don't want you to kill children. I want you to buy them back from me. God says, I own them. I want you to buy them back. The word for that is redeem. God said, I want you to use money to redeem them from me, that he owns them. And so here's the thing. There are two kinds of giving, quote unquote, in the Bible. One is to let go of the thing that's already God's. And two is to hand to God the thing that I want to give him. Two kinds of giving. Now, we're a church that does money things differently. We're a church that does financial things differently. A lot of times you'll get to a church and what they'll do is they'll say, we'll put together a budget of all the things we want to accomplish and then we're going to ask you to give money to us. We're going to ask you to give money to this budget to accomplish it. We don't do it that way. We work backwards. Instead, we say, what has God already blessed our people? How many of our people are obedient with the giving back to God the thing that he already owns? How many people of us are doing that? What is the income that comes to our hands because of that faithfulness? And the biblical word for that is tithing. What comes into our hands from that faithfulness? Now let's make a budget based on that. And so the budget that we set up every year is based on what we actually believe faithful people are giving back to God because God has brought it into their hands. And so I don't pray that God, would, that God would make you give more. I pray that God would bless you more so that you'd have more to give. That's my prayer for you when it comes to our budget. But this text that we just looked at said that there are times when God says, I want a special offering, and I want a special offering for a specific purpose. And his purpose in Exodus 25, we'll see next week, is he is about ready to start a building fund. You see, in Exodus 25, God says it's time for you to have some place that we can use on a regular basis for the worship that I want you to be doing for me. And so God says, I want you to have people give an offering based on what they want to give. And he gives it wide open. He lets it wide open. Well, that's the deal. The cat's out of the bag. We're a church right now that is in exactly the same position. We've outgrown this facility. It's time for us to move on into another facility. And we've done the research. This last summer, I put together a research team. I said, let's find out what's available to us. And so I said, okay, go ahead. Let's look all around the Lafayette area and find out what's available to us. And here's the, here's the reality. What we found is so expensive that it is stupid for us to rent anymore. We need to buy some land and build because all the other options are way more expensive. Let me tell you a little bit of a story. Back in 2005, my wife and I were part of a church up in Chicago, and we had been just commissioned to launch a new church somewhere in Indiana. An organization called Midwest Church Planting had commissioned us, and our church in Chicago had told us that they, want, they thought it was a good idea that we should go. And so we spent 2005 praying about where God would have us go. And we traveled all over Indiana. But about the second week we were traveling, my wife says to me, I know where God's going to take us. And I said, oh, you do, do you? And she said, I think I do. And I said, so you want to let me in on this? She says, not yet. So we drive all the way around Indiana. We go down to Evansville. We go up to Elkhart. We go into Chesterton. We look at Noblesville. We're here in Lafayette. In Lafayette, we saved to the last because she went to Purdue and I'm from California and I wasn't too sure I wanted to have that much connection. So uh, anyway, we saved Lafayette for last. And the week we came down to Lafayette, we drove around and I just really thought it was a cool place. I liked it, especially the south end of town here where they were just building the Walmart and there was this new developments, uh, housing developments coming up. And I thought this was a kind of cool place. And I said, okay, Jen, so go ahead and tell me, where did God tell you we were supposed to go? And she said, Lafayette. And I said, yeah, I think so too. So she'd been praying about it. And God had told her somehow that he wanted us to go to Lafayette. So then we come down to Lafayette. We start trying to decide where are we going to move and, and where are we going to live? And so we found a place and we start establishing the church situation. And about a month or two into the church situation, because we're beginning to build a group of people, we um, needed a place to meet. And so we started praying about where to meet and eventually it prompted my heart that we should just come to this building here, which was vacant at the time, and we should pray in front of it. And I didn't know if it was ever going to be ours or not, but I said, let's just pray in front of it. Who knows what God might do? And two years later, God opened the doors for this building for us to come here and be here. And I was like, that's pretty cool. 
And then now we're in a place where it's time for us to relocate again. And so I got this team together. They start praying. It turns out we looked all over the place and we couldn't find anything. In fact, if we were to rent space on the south end of town here that would work for us, it would be three times as much money as we're currently spending on this space. So like, that's just not smart. So we're looking at different land options. We found a land option. Check it out. We found this one place. And we contacted our realtor and said, can you find information on this? The realtor contacted the owner and the owner that same day brought blueprints to the real estate office to say, I have no idea what I should charge for this land, but uh, maybe let's just start here with this number. He wanted to sell it, but he didn't even have a number in his mind of how much money he wanted. So now we're thinking, okay, this is pretty interesting. God has given us an opportunity for some land. The problem is we don't have any money. So I went back and I told Jen about it. She goes, oh, don't worry about it. That's the piece of land I've been praying for. And I was like, you know, you've kind of got an in here with God. You want to let me, let me in. So anyway, so she, she's been praying for this. It's, things are coming together. It's really cool. Uh, and if it falls through, I don't want you to get all disappointed just yet. So we're not talking about where it is just yet, but it's on this south side corridor here on Veterans Memorial Parkway-ish area, somewhere around here. Here's the deal. We have no idea how much money it's going to cost. Because the guy doesn't know how much money he's going to charge. So we have to make some type of offer, but we got nothing. So what do you do? I mean, you can't get a loan when it's nothing that you have and you have no idea how much it's going to cost. We have to make some type of offer that God is just going to help us determine the number. And part of that is we need a little bit of money to get started. And so we are launching this December and November, the end of this year, we're launching a building fund. Now you need to know, This is the first time we have ever raised money for ourselves. We've been in a church for about seven years now, and we've done a number of fundraisers, and we are weird because we do all of our fundraisers for other organizations. This is our first time that we are starting a fundraiser to do it for ourselves. But I need to let you know also that even this fundraiser is going to be weird because we're not going to do this fundraiser all for ourselves either. Now, I know by the end of December, I would love to have $100,000. But even if we don't have $100,000, we're still going to give a good portion of it away. Here's what we're going to do. For every dollar that comes in for our new building fund, we're going to take 10% right off the top and send it upstream. We're going to say, we want to plant other churches who have this kind of big picture mindset. And so we're going to send it to the same organization that helped us get this church started. 10% right off the top. Because we believe if tithing is a good principle, then we're just going to go ahead and live by it as a church too. So we already tithe, but even this new income that's coming in, we're going to tithe on it. Secondly, we are already committed to this uh, Love Indiana thing where our money is going to get doubled. And so we're going to take some of the money that comes in from our building fund and we're going to earmark it to that thing. And so then we're going to bless some local organization that we haven't even identified which local organization yet. But it's going to be awesome. And we're going to bless their socks off, hopefully with a $10,000 gift at the end of December, just like we did last year for the Salvation Army. It's going to be great. So here's the deal. Yes, we're starting a building fund. No, we're not going to be doing building fund like a lot of people do, where I'm going to be like, oh, you got to give more money. You got to give more money because we're going to give more money as a church as much as we possibly can. So. I've talked a lot about that stuff, and I want to remind you of why. Just today, someone came up to me and told me something that I barely could believe. Um, You're going to hear this whole story eventually. As soon as we can make a video out of it or put it on our website or something, you're going to hear the whole story, but here's the snippet. Someone came up to me today and said, in this last week, my former drug dealer called me up and said, I've got some good stuff for you. You want to start up again? And this person said, "Um, are you crazy? You think you've got the good stuff for me? I've got the good stuff. And this person just went off preaching at the drug dealer on the phone. I've got the good stuff. The good stuff is friends who love me and support me and care for me no matter what's going on in my life. The good stuff is knowing Jesus, my Savior, who has rescued me from the life of all that crud that you were part of. That's the good stuff. By the way, do you want to come to church with me tomorrow? And I said, you should have told them the first time is free. But, so he, he, said, he said, I'll think about it. Now, if you're here this morning, I want to meet you afterwards just to, say, to give you a high five and say the, the good stuff is free. But here's the deal. I'm letting you know that this organization, group of people, whatever you want to call it, people's lives are getting changed because of what's happening here. And there's a reason we're doing this. 
We want to make sure more people have the opportunity to have their lives impacted that way. That's the reason we're doing this. But I'm not going to tell you you have to. It's all just if God leads your heart to give. So go home tonight, pray about it. If this is your first time with us, sorry for talking about money so long. This is the only time we do it. Listen to all of our sermons. Last week I talked for a whole hour on something that had nothing to do with money. So there you go, proof. 